All right, and we are back in part two. Now we just got done finishing uh, creating the file that is necessary for the desktop system here to recognize your, your Android phone, your HTC Android phone. And uh, just as we got done finishing that, um, all of the necessary packages from the Android repository that we needed um, were finished downloading and installing, okay? So once those all get done uh, and installing, all you're gonna do is just close out of, out of that and close all that up. Okay. Now what we're going to want to do is we want to test it out. We want to see if everything that we did um, took. Now actually, you know what, before we do that, let's go into the SDK. Now let's go into the Tools folder. Now you're going to notice um, in between part one and two, I actually moved um, ADB from the platform tools directory here. That's where ADB is by default. Now I still have ADB in here. All I did was copy uh, ADB and then paste it uh, a copy of it into the tools directory and I did that because I'm just used to having ADB in, in the tools directory there I could actually move the ADB file um, to uh, another part of my system and put it in my path so that I don't even need to actually put myself in the directory when I want to execute the ADB command but quite honestly I'm so used to just going into the tools directory at a force of habit when I want to use DDMS or when I want to zip align something that it's just an easy it's just as easy for me to um, put ADB here and another reason why I do that is I use the um, Eclipse application which is right here now I do that when I work with uh, themes and all of that good stuff so um, Eclipse also looks to see if ADB is in the tools directory and uh, it'll throw an error occasionally if it's not in there so you know that's why I also put ADB in there um, so I copied and, and pasted AD, a copy of uh, ADB here in the tools directory so what we want to do now is we want to put ourselves inside the SDK tools directory now we are gonna what I normally do after I uh, install this is I type um, period backslash adb kill dash server next I do period backslash adb start dash server and there we go it says that it's starting now in port 5037 Damien started successfully so that tells me I know that adb is going to be good to go but we're going to test it out anyway now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take uh, our HTC phone now again I'm using the HTC incredible and we want to put it in debugging mode the way you do that is you hit menu you go to settings you go to applications you go to development and enable USB debugging mode okay after you get done enable enabling USB debugging what you're gonna to want to do is connect your phone to your computer via the data cable and then we want to check to see if the the uh, our our system here can recognize the phone. We're going to do that by uh, executing ADB devices, and there we go, success. So we've it recognized my device. It's it's given it that that particular name right there. Let's try to um, just try to run ADB shell. So period backslash ADB shell, and there it is. Hit LS. That's going to list everything here. As you can see, that's everything on, on uh, my base system. Let's uh, CD into here system here. And let's hit LS again. And as you can see, there's the app directory. Let's CD into my app directory. And here's all the apps I'm in my system directory here on my phone. Now one of the things that I mentioned in my other video that you can actually do with uh, the Android SDK is pull things from your phone. Now I'm not in, my, in recovery, my phone is up and running, and I'm going to show you how we can pull an app right off the phone while it's running, okay? And let's pull, I don't know, this talk.epk app off. Okay, we're going to do that by, we want to exit out of here, alright, and we want to um, pull it by executing the command adb pull and then we want to pull it from system app we want to pull talk.apk 
and um, let's put it on our desktop. So and hit enter. And there we go. It tells us um, the transfer speed was 1628 kilobits per second. And there is talk.apk. And it is that easy. Now, um, what a lot of people don't realize is that an, what an APK basically is is a zip file. Okay, now if you're on a Windows based system, um, to basically see what's inside this APK, one of the things that you can do is just change the extension from .apk to .zip, and then just extract the contents like you would any other zip file. But on Linux, all you got to do is just right click and then hit Extract here, and that's that. Open it up, and there's everything inside of uh, inside of the APK. So that is it, everybody. Uh, we've successfully um, set up the Android SDK, and we've enabled our Linux uh, desktop system here to recognize our Android phone. So I really hope that the video tutorial today was helpful. I hope that you guys um, really take advantage of the power of the SDK and um, all the really neat things that you can do with it, whether it be you know putting a ROM together yourself, whether it be um, putting a ROM together that you're going to share with the Android community, um, or just, just trying to optimize uh, what you already have. Um, Again, I hope this was uh, beneficial for you. If you really enjoyed the video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up, give it a like. It helps get get my videos a little bit more exposure. Um, you know, as long as people are watching my videos, I will continue to make them. I'm kind of just trying to do my part in helping the Android community get a little bit more familiar with Android and with working with Android. Um, being that Android's a uh, open source platform. We have a lot of freedoms to be able to um, kind of make our phones anything that we want them to be, and um, you know other other mobile platforms don't have that type of freedom. So I'm trying to do my best um, to educate uh, you know newcomers to Android and newcomers to Linux to be able to kind of harness that power a little bit. And so again, um, please give it a thumbs up and a like if you found these videos helpful. And um, by all means, leave a comment. You know, if you are having a technical difficulty trying to get all this stuff to work, leave comments. We can, you know, if it's something that I may not see right away, someone else may see it and have an answer and can help you out. And it's a good way that uh, we can kind of um, share information and, and troubleshoot some things. So again, hey, it's Lou. Um, going over how to set up the Android SDK and enable your Linux desktop to view your HTC Android smartphone. Hope it was helpful, and we will catch you guys next time.